Hi, um, I'm just uh, coming in to say a word on the second assignment. And uh, this video, basically, this presentation here is just giving an overview of what the second unit is about. The second unit is a build up on the earlier one and um, where we just gave an overview of what apologetics is and the type of apologetics or well, the, the type of apologetics that takes place and how we approach apologetics. In this um, unit, we are seeking to explain and understand what an apologist looks like. Or in other words, what should somebody do or develop? How can somebody develop into uh, a person of apologetics? But before we go any further, I would just like to state that... Uh, we engage in apologetics, uh, not so much to win an argument, not so much to emerge a superior, uh, you know, complicated uh, person who has got a great mind. That is not the goal. The goal, according to First Peter and, and other passages of scripture, is to uh, establish the Christian faith, to defend the Christian faith, and yet in all this, we're seeking to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, a person who is going to engage in apologetics, uh, yes, who have their minds broadened and wide, they can do a lot of things, but their aim is to advance the cause of Christ. But we must say that um, apologetics is essential. Uh, remember we said the word apologetics comes from the word called uh, in, in Greek, or I think it's in Greek, it says apologia. It means to defend. Uh, and, and, and when we're talking about Christian apologetics, we're talking about the defense of the Christian faith. Now, you and I don't just enter upon this work without being equipped, being trained, and being given the necessary skills. And so that's what we are saying in this unit, that if you are going to take upon the noble work of apologetics, you must be well trained. Well, you, you may not necessarily have to go to a seminary and some other place, but just reading the scriptures tells you that Christians are consistently giving an argument, uh, presenting a position and trying to advance the cause of Jesus Christ. So now when you look in the world, like we said in, in a previous presentation, uh, various views arise about apologetics. Some people think apologetics is needless. Others think it just generates quarrels and, and fights and verbal fights and so on. Uh, but it is a necessary thing. It's part of the Christian faith. That's who we are. We must present the cause of Jesus Christ. So uh, there are at least three reactions that you find, or at least are found as I have lived in the Christian faith for some time. First of all, there are Christian people who uh, perhaps are timid. They are afraid. They don't want to engage in politics, uh, not in politics, apologetics. They, they say, no, 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 no. I would rather just be quiet, live my own life, live the Christian life, and uh, life is too short to engage in those. So they, they, they don't have anything to do with defending the Christian faith. They would rather be quiet and demonstrate the Christian uh, life like that. Now, that, that is a problematic stance, as uh, you will notice as you read the scriptures. But then there's a second group of people who are just naive. They're not bothered. Whether they defend the Christian faith or not, what matters is I am a king's kid and I'm making progress. So I don't need to worry. I just live uh, the life as I please. But then there's a third group of people, who uh, Christian people, who believe that the Christian faith must not only be defended, but it must be established. Wherever they are, wherever they find themselves on this terrestrial ball, they will do everything as God has given them strength to defend the Christian faith. Now, this group of Christian people, this latter group that I'm talking about who believe that Christians, Christianity must be defended, 
uh, they, 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 not, they don't necessarily believe that the Bible can stand on its own uh, and they don't uh, believe that God's word is so weak. No, no, they, they have great faith in God's word. They are presuppositional largely and they believe that God's word is true. But it is a duty of the Christian person to defend the Christian faith. So this group of people spend time reading, studying, uh, you know, investing time in thinking, reasoning, logically and otherwise. They read books, they listen, they know the trends that are going on, they know the discussion points that are taking place uh, and the trending thoughts of the times and even the thinking systems that are taking place so that when they go and engage with people uh, in defending the Christian faith, they have a better understanding of where the person is coming from and why they're saying what they're saying. That is Christian apologetics. But then the question that still begs answering is, how can I, as a Christian person, develop of those traits. Now, I won't go into detail. Let me just say here that if you are going to be a person in the third category that I mentioned of those that believe in defending the Christian faith, and we must defend the Christian faith, there are two areas that you must work on. First of all, you must have what is known as spiritual development. You must grow the inner man. You must apply yourself to the means of grace. And by means of grace, I mean reading the Bible, evangelism, reading Christian, good Christian literature uh, and, and fellowship, and perhaps even uh, trying to read other things that uh, may not necessarily be Christian, but with a view to understand the world. So spiritual development or spiritual maturity means that you must begin to grow from uh, drinking milk, from eating little, little things, to eating bones and, 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 and things like that, things that are able to make you strong and healthy, that you'll be able to defend the Christian faith. You remember that passage in Hebrews uh, chapter 4? The, the apostle is lamenting that these Christian people had been infants for a long time. They had been in their nappies for a long time. And so as he's writing, he says, look, by now I should be writing you tougher things, but you are young. You're still babes. But you need to grow to become mature. You must be wise. You must be strong. You must be solid and be able to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are we saying? Number one, spiritual development. You and I must not be content. Uh, just to be what we were many years ago. We must grow. The inner man, the stamina, the energy, the strength, the ability, the reasoning capacity, and, 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 and the breadth of our thinking must grow, blossom, and increase. Those things that sounded very philosophical, complex, and difficult years ago, today I must be able to understand them break them down, and be able to respond to them. So what are we saying? Know the scriptures. Internalize the scriptures. They must be part of you. Now, when I'm saying this, I'm assuming and presupposing that you are a Christian. Because if you're not a Christian in the first place, you're not born again, you've not been transformed by the power of grace, uh, we will not make any headway. But here I'm talking about somebody who has turned from a life of sin and has turned to own Christ as his Savior. And having become Christians, they begin now to grow. They begin to read uh, Christian literature, like I said. They must take in milk and then go on to flesh and bones. <coughs> That's what a mature Christian is. But the second area that we must uh, spend our time in if we are going to grow as a Christian apologist is that we must be able to develop our mental cognitive faculties. We must be able to develop a logical mind. We must be able to develop a mind that is able to grapple with complex and difficult things and be able to respond. We must 
have. We must understand when a rationalist is talking, for instance. We must be able to understand when somebody is talking from a syncretic perspective or animistic uh, perspective and world view. Now, what does it entail to develop our mind and our faculties? It includes reading, studying, meditating, although usually we talk about meditating on the scriptures, but here I'm talking about it in, in a loose sense, that you must be able to read and understand and detect from afar what people uh, are saying or are thinking. But also it means that you must be able to read uh, even those things that you would ordinarily not like to read. For instance, uh, when I was studying, I, 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 I had to read a book called The, the Philosophy of humanism. It's a big book, almost 500 pages. Very big and yet very poisonous for the Christian because the writer is all out attacking any religion, whether it's Christian or not. He's just saying religion is rubbish. Uh, we are humans. We must be at the center of everything uh, and our life and everything should revolve upon ourselves. And human beings, because they have good brains, they are going to use science and they are going to resolve all problems. So religion is for those that are backwards. Religion is for those that are lazy, those who have got some nuts that are loose in the head and those that don't think properly. Now, as a Christian, as an apologist, you must go into the area of science. Understand what science is, what the principles are, what true science constitutes. But you must go into the social sciences. That is the hard sciences I was talking about. But you must go into the social sciences as well. You must know how uh, a humanist thinks, a socialist thinks. Uh, you know, humanistic thinking. And human, humanistic thinking always places man at the center of everything. And they are able to explain phenomena. People are like this because of this. Uh, religion was created so that we might control human behavior and blah, blah, blah. But really, God doesn't exist. So as a Christian, you must understand social work. You must understand uh, socialism, for instance. You must understand psychology. You must understand all these other areas. But the Christian uh, mind must engage in cells studying economics, mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, name it. Now we're talking about uh, uh, theoretical science or physics, for example, for example, and many other areas. The Christian must understand the worldviews, the thought systems, the ideas, and, and, and even some of the conspiracies that exist. The Christian must look at these things and yet use the lenses of scripture to come up with a position. So how, how, how can I develop those traits? Two things. One, spiritual development. Know the scriptures, grow in them. Let your system be soaked in the word of God. But number two, develop your mind. Now, sadly, the second part that I've talked about, about developing your mind, very few Christians want to engage in thinking. And those that go into thinking, again, veer into another extreme, they just become logical, uh, you know, they, they just become rationalist and, and, and so on. And there's no spirituality that oozes out of them. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying as a Christian person, you must have a healthy, intelligent interest in the world's affairs, what is going on. Have emotional intelligence, a business intelligence, uh, and, and, and so on. You know what is going on and be able to interact wisely. And yet at the same time, all this to the glory and honor of God. So, well, I, I need to be ending here. And, and I hope that um, this point, I haven't dealt with it exhaustively. Perhaps we'll deal with it as we go on. Uh, is that we enter apologetics not to win 
an argument. Of course, it feels nice when you triumph and uh, convince somebody, but that's not the goal of apologetics. It's not even the goal of apologetics to, to, to come across as somebody who's a macho man, who's brave and... No, no. The goal of apologetics is to advance the cause of Christ by defending it and establishing the Christian faith. How do I grow? How do I develop uh, those uh, skills? Uh, mentally, spiritually. How do I know that I am called to apologetics? Not all of us are called to apologetics, but God equips and gives ability so that you'll be able to function uh, correctly. I hope this uh, presentation has been of help and uh, you have found it helpful. Uh, let's, let's move to some other parts, but we shall continue talking about the traits and the characteristics and the ability, and we'll be unpacking some of those things that we have mentioned in this set. So have a great time. Remember, don't forget to do the assignment. Thank you.